Welcome everyone to Barnard's virtual annual gala. I'm Carly Kloss and I joined Barnard's Board of Trustees in 2020 and am thrilled to co-chair tonight's gala. Outside of my professional career, my passion for technology led me to learn to code and ultimately launch Code with Classy, a STEM-focused nonprofit with a mission to empower girls to learn to code and become leaders in tech. So, tonight's celebration of science is especially meaningful. Thank you all so much for being here with Carly and I as we join together in celebrating the amazing Barnard community and the incredible people who pass through its halls. My name is Caroline Bliss Spencer. I graduated from Barnard in 2009 and joined Barnard's Board of Trustees in 2016. It has been such an honor to have co-chaired our annual gala for the past four years, and I'm so grateful that you've chosen to tune in tonight from wherever in the world you may be. As a student at Barnard, I studied art history, but went on to work as a professional investor and I'm just one of the many alums with this kind of nonlinear path. Barnard has provided academic excellence across the arts and sciences for decades, and I'm thrilled that we've all come together tonight to celebrate the college and this incredible community. Now, Carly, what's a celebration without a signature drink? Please join us in welcoming our friend, beverage consultant, author, and creative director, Pamela Wisnitzer, class of 2007, to the virtual stage. Hello, Barnard community. My name is Pamela Wisnitzer, class of 2007, and it is my honor to be making a very wonderful signature cocktail for this year's gala, a signature drink that you can be enjoying all night if you're with us in person at the gala, or if you're at home, you can actually learn how to make and replicate this drink at home, alcoholic or non-alcoholic, and if alcoholic, please make sure you're 21 or older to be drinking this. So let's not waste any more time and let's make the variable. All right, to get started with this, we actually have a really fun infusion. That's right, we're taking our main spirit, we're taking vodka, and we're gonna be infusing it with a butterfly blue pea flower. I think that's a theme you're gonna see a lot in this drink. So the butterfly blue pea flower is this wonderfully occurring flower that is blue in nature. So we're gonna take some of that dried, you can order it online, you can sometimes find it in specialty food markets as well. Take a few, a few of the petals in there, and we're going to add in our vodka. You can infuse up to eight ounces of vodka at a time. Uh, if you're going to infuse more, please add more of the pea flower in there. We do have to let it steep and wait. Alcohol acts a lot like hot water. So let's give this about five minutes and see what happens. All right, so five to seven minutes later, you're gonna have something that's kind of Barnard blue, but don't be fooled because it may not always look like this at the end of the drink. So let's get started in making this cocktail, shall we? We are going to build this cocktail from our least expensive to our most expensive ingredient. So that means we're gonna start with some lime juice. Always use fresh juice if possible. It's going to yield the best drink in the end. Okay, so we are going to use 0.75 ounces of fresh lime juice. We're gonna squeeze it out here. All right, look at that fresh juice, I love this. This is how you get the big guns, okay? <laughs> All right, put it here, and then we're going to pour it into our tin. Next thing we're gonna have is a pineapple syrup. If you're making this at home, it's quite simple. All you need to do is add equal parts of pineapple juice and sugar, and either add it to a blender, or you can put it on a low heat on a stove top until it all dissolves. You'll have a beautiful pineapple syrup that you can add into this drink. 0.75 ounces are going into the tin. And finally, our butterfly blue pea flower infused vodka. If you'd like to have a female-founded vodka brand or a woman-founded vodka brand, there are lots of great ones on the market, such as Amass that comes from California or Civic Vodka that comes from Washington, D.C. And again, if you're doing it non-alcoholic, great companies like Ritual or Seedlip where you can pick up and make a great drink in the same way. All right, we're gonna add two ounces of that into this drink. And now we're gonna add the ice. Lock and load and we're going to shake. We're gonna shake for about seven seconds or until it's nice and cold. Awesome. Let's open that up. Now remember how that drink was nice and blue when we started? Well, presto changeo with a little bit of science and the drink is now purple. But that's not it because we still wanna to top it off with a beautiful garnish. So, to finish this drink, we're gonna add a little pinch of blue spirulina powder on top. You know, a little Barnard blue for all of you. And for those of you who are joining us at the gala, be sure to come by because we've got your blue Barnard Bears by its side. And there you have it, the variable. 
Thank you so much for attending the gala and being part of the Barner community. Have a wonderful evening and see you all soon. Thank you so much, Pamela. This may be my new favorite cocktail. This academic year, we are celebrating the Barnard Year of Science by highlighting all things related to science, technology, engineering, and math at Barnard. In many ways, this is a very unique time for the college, really for all of us, and your participation empowers the next generation of history makers to build a brighter future. But even as we look ahead, we want to acknowledge how far we've come. That's why tonight we are celebrating all of the Barnard alumni and current faculty who are members of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. These prestigious national academies encourage research and education and are entrusted to consult the government on matters of policy, legislation, and they have extremely rigorous standards for entry. In order to be elected, one must demonstrate distinguished and continuing professional achievements, and no more than 120 individuals can be elected annually. So membership really is quite selective. It's clearly not easy to achieve this level of recognition, especially for women in fields historically dominated by men. But a remarkable 22 members of the Barnard community have been selected. These women have overcome incredible challenges to be leaders in STEM, and they have made all of us at Barnard proud because the college has always encouraged students to seek the glimmer of opportunity embedded in challenge. Tonight's gala honorees are mission-driven leaders who have dedicated their lives to deepening our understanding of some of the most complex topics in the world. They're mathematicians, professors, geneticists, and physicians. They're chemists, cancer researchers, and humanitarians. They study fields as varied as magnetism, reproductive health, electrical currents, behavioral science, and health economics, to name just a few. In a word, they're pioneers, and they all represent the inextinguishable Barnard spirit. We are so excited for you to get to know the stories of these distinguished honorees and their important contributions to society. As part of the Barnard Year of Science, the college has woven STEM-related topics into every aspect of its robust educational experience. Throughout the night, you'll have the chance to learn more about our incredible gala honorees and how they found their calling. And you'll hear about students who are forging their own distinctive paths right now. You'll also learn more about the value of a Barnard education and how important it is for our community to invest in tomorrow's leaders. After all, your support is what makes attending Barnard possible for nearly half our students, the young trailblazers who rely on financial aid for access to the empowering intellectual experience that is uniquely Barnard. There is so much in store for you throughout tonight's virtual program, and we're excited to be on this journey with you. So thank you again for joining us. And without further ado, I'm thrilled to welcome to your screen the 8th President of Barnard College, Sian Leah Bylock. Caroline, Carly, thank you for the warm welcome and for all you've done to make our first hybrid gala a reality. This is a momentous time in history as we celebrate the scientific developments that have produced innovative ways to bridge geographic boundaries and address our most pressing challenges like the COVID-19 pandemic. And it is an important time for Barnard too. Barnard is deeply grateful to all of our donors and Diana Vagelos, class of 55 and Dr. Roy Vagelos, thank you for committing 55 million to fund the renovation and expansion of Alshul Hall into a modern center for scientific education and research. The Roy and Diana Vagelos Science Center or the R&D Science Center is truly a game changer for the sciences at Barnard one that will secure our eminence in the field and further elevate the college as a leader in preparing young women and underrepresented voices for careers in STEM fields. The R&D Science Center will ensure that we cement our position as the place for young women to pursue their bold ambitions across the arts, the sciences, the humanities, and everywhere they intersect. After all, Developing an understanding of STEM fields is a critical component of a liberal arts education. We rely on innovative ways of marrying the creative with the quantitative in order to address the complex challenges of today's world. At its core, that's what the Barnard Year of Science is all about. Even the gala proves to be a testament to our mission, 
Technology is what has brought us together, and creativity is what helps us feel connected even while we're miles apart. The past few years forced us to be collectively nimble and innovative as a society. But Barnard students have always been that way. By nature, they bring fresh perspectives to important conversations, new ways of thinking to solve age-old problems, and create answers to questions that have not even been asked yet. In my role at the college, I'm really humbled every time I get to experience the ingenuity of our students firsthand. In fact, I recently had the pleasure of chatting with Nikita Nambiar, a first-year neuroscience and behavior major, who hosts a cognitive science-themed WBAR radio talk show, Neuro Tea with Nikki. Nikki's fascination with the connections between the brain, behavior, and the environment, and her determination to share these wonders with the world exemplify the interdisciplinary interests of our brilliant student body. We have a responsibility to bring the best and the brightest to Barnard and help them develop the intellectual resources to take advantage of the opportunities that arise as new fields, new ideas, and new technologies emerge. As the world changes quickly, our commitment to providing these resources is more essential than ever. Barnard is a need-blind institution and we are committed to meeting the full financial needs of our students because we strongly believe that academic excellence cannot be achieved without the challenging conversations that take place at the conjunction of multiple viewpoints. It's our responsibility to bring together young leaders from different backgrounds and experiences and enable future generations to expand their mindsets and think more critically about the world. We simply cannot uphold our need-blind admissions policy, nor our dedication to the social mobility of our students without financial resources. The funds we raise through the gala help us meet the full financial need of Barnard's promising students across the sciences and the arts, regardless of their circumstances. Your unwavering support is what enables us to cultivate all of the interdisciplinary innovations that are redefining the educational experience for future generations and bettering our world. For that, we remain grateful. Thank you again for being here and for sharing what you can, and please enjoy the rest of the evening. Hello, my name is Maniz Reza, and I'm a junior at Barnard majoring in biochemistry. I'm also a first time recipient of the Golden Family Scholarship. Thank you to the gala organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak with all of you this evening. While I came to the college with the intention of becoming a physician, my experience at the Summer Research Institute, or SRI, opened up a whole new world of opportunities that I didn't know existed. SRI offers the opportunity for 200 Barnard students to spend their summer living on campus and conducting paid scientific research alongside faculty from the college, Columbia University, or elsewhere in New York. We're also invited to participate in activities organized by Beyond Barnard. During SRI, I studied nanophotonics, or the behavior of light on the nanoscale, which was an interest I had in high school that I didn't get to explore in detail until this program. Not only did I get the chance to present my research during a poster session, but I also submitted my findings for publication alongside my program mentor. Throughout my Barnard experience, I've been encouraged to explore my passions with an open mind. I've worked in a physical chemistry lab, and I've had direct patient contact while exploring the relationship between hallucinations and delusions in individuals with schizophrenia. Through my volunteer efforts, I've analyzed the issues facing Muslim women in healthcare, and through my marketing internship, I've learned the values of being able to clearly communicate scientific concepts. This opportunity for discovery has been important not just to me, but also to my peers, and we are grateful for all of the bold Barnard women who paved their own paths before us. For the next part of our gala program, you learn about the many different scientific endeavors a Barnard education can inspire, and how our community's ingenuity is bettering our world. Take a look.
When students enter at Barnard, they're entering a group of 36,000 alumni who are there to fight for them, to help push them, help them open doors for opportunities, give them research experiences, give them internship experiences. That alumni community is one of the things that make Barnard so special. I'm reminded of the accomplishments of many of our alumni. Anne Sitovsky, class of 1937 and member of the National Academy of Medicine, whose research on the cost of medical care continues to have an impact on both public and private health care policies. Ruth Toby Gross, class of 1941 and member of the National Academy of Medicine, a pediatrician and advocate who dedicated her career to finding new approaches to the care of children and the first woman to receive an endowed professorship at Stanford. Helen Ranney, class of 1941, member of the National Academy of Sciences and the National Academy of Medicine, was a hematologist who discovered the genetic basis of sickle cell anemia and was the first woman president of the Association of American Physicians. Evelyn Hu, class of 1969, is a member of both the National Academy of Sciences and the National Academy of Engineering. Evelyn is the co-director of the Harvard Quantum Lab, and her research uses cutting-edge nanofabrication techniques to explore new possibilities of optical and electronic behavior within materials. She credits her liberal arts education with providing her with the foundation for a lifetime of interdisciplinary work. Our inspiring gala honorees have forged the pathway for future generations of scientists, engineers, mathematicians, medical doctors. They set an example, they set a bar that all our students uh, will aspire to, so thank you. One of the most unique aspects of being able to conduct research at a place like Barnard is the student-faculty interaction that happens. The incredibly unique setting of being at a liberal arts college affiliated with a research institution in the middle of New York City just provides tremendous opportunities. And specifically here on Barnard's campus, students have the opportunity to work alongside their faculty mentors. At Barnard, over a third of our graduates are math and science majors, and about 40% of our STEM majors go on to medical school or to get a PhD. What we are doing are giving our young women the tools, the skills, and the experience to go out be leaders, knowledge creators, make that next discovery, change technology, and help make the world a better place. The interdisciplinary approach to studies and academics here at Barnard has been incredibly important to me as a student in mathematics. This has presented itself in the fact that I've had to take rigorous courses in terms of reading and writing, and I've developed significantly as a writer. Thanks in large part to the enormous generosity of Roy and Diana Vagelos and other lead donors, our planned renovation and expanded science facilities, the R&D Science Center, will serve as a state-of-the-art hub for scientific exploration that is well equipped to support the trailblazing work of future generations. Tonight, as we honor our community members of the National Academy of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, I know there will be even more exceptional Barnard women in STEM to celebrate in the years to come. Hi, I'm Guy Delancey. I'm the Associate Director of the Movement Lab. Um, my association with the Movement Lab involves running the Movement Lab on a day-to-day -day basis, keeping abreast of best practices in technology and creativity, um, in concert with the Faculty Director, Gabri Krista, and our present post-bac, um, Noah Weiss. The mission of the Movement Lab is to be a sandbox, a place for exploration between technology and creativity. The Movement Lab highlights the intersection of arts and sciences by trying, after much experience, to not foreground so much the technology, but to allow the technology to be backgrounded in an exploration of social concerns. It's multidisciplinary, it's dedicated to exploring creativity and technology from many different angles. For instance, we do VR, we had our last post back did a, a sort of an exploration of AI through movement itself, we do filming. It's a, very much about being embodied, I think that's what we encourage, embodied in technology and many different things. Technology is a tool to amplify creativity.
Hello, my name is Daniela Ricariano and I am a junior at Barnard studying physics and computer science. I am currently working as a research assistant with Professor Rashmi Mukherjee studying blazars using gamma ray telescopes. We are all just a tiny part of a big universe and I love that I can explore that in my research. I grew up in Londrina, Brazil, and I first heard of Barnard when I was learning about Professor Jenna Levin's research in black holes and galaxies. I was excited when I was accepted to Barnard's Science Pathway Schoolers program, a highly selective four-year program that supports talented young women who identify as underrepresented minorities or as first-generation college students, and who convey a strong interest in the sciences. The Science Pathway Schoolers program offered the promise of exceptional opportunities and resources like faculty mentorship, networking, and cohort support. It was one of the biggest reasons I decided to continue my studies in the United States. It hasn't been easy coming to a new country and learning another language on top of pursuing my educational interests. But the international community of scholars I get to be a part of through my partner experience has helped me overcome these challenges. I was able to connect with fellow science pathway schoolers before classes even began by participating in a summer experience that took place before the start of my first semester. I was introduced to my advisor, Professor Mukherjee, who has also served as my mentor and helped me to explore my passions. And I got a better understanding of the English language through my STEM classes. As president of the Brazilian Society at Columbia, I get to share more about my home culture when I invite my international friends to our events. And that has been a big comfort to me. In this next video, you will be introduced to gala honorees who also found invaluable comfort as they overcame their own professional obstacles. For decades, Barnard alumni and faculty have been trailblazers in the sciences. Our bold, brilliant alumni and faculty members of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine have overcome incredible obstacles to make groundbreaking discoveries while using their knowledge and skills to improve the lives of others. Miriam Sarachuk, class of 1954 was a groundbreaking physicist whose research on magnetism shed light on a fundamental aspect of how some metal alloys behave. I devoted my efforts and my time to the discipline of physics, which was not open to women at the time. I knocked my way into it. I really kicked the door sort of ajar and snuck in. Barbara Stoll, class of 1971, is a pediatrician who has focused her career on studying and improving outcomes for preterm and low birth weight infants, especially in developing countries. Elena Nightingale, class of 1954, is a physician, researcher, and human rights activist who spent years shedding light on the important role that physicians play as protectors of human rights around the world. Elissa Newport, class of 1969, has been a visionary researcher when it comes to studying the acquisition of language. Dr. Newport's focus has been on children and early exposure to language, as well as the recovery of language among those who suffered brain damage early in life. Jacqueline DeRoque, class of 1968, is a senior fellow at the Guttmacher Institute. Jacqueline has spent over 40 years working on policy-focused research and public education on reproductive health. Rochelle Hirschhorn, class of 1953, is a geneticist and innovator who served as the chief of the Division of Medical Genetics at New York University Langone Medical Center for 24 years. Through their numerous accomplishments, these incredible women have forged a path for others to follow in their footsteps lighting the way for all of Barnard's future scientists, mathematicians, engineers, and doctors. But women are still greatly outnumbered by men in STEM fields. Mentors bridge the gap and help build connections and advance career goals and research interests. Through our world-class faculty and inspiring alumni, Barnard has long been a place for women to see other women achieving greatness in the sciences. Elizabeth McNally, class of 1983, 
is a cardiac geneticist and the first woman to be elected editor of the preeminent medical publication, Journal of Clinical Investigation. Dr. McNally lists fellow gala honoree, Dr. Ora Rosen, as one of her early mentors at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Eva Neer, class of 1959, was a member of both the National Academy of Sciences and the National Academy of Medicine. Though her professional career was marked by many incredible achievements, as a professor at Harvard, she was known across campus as a brilliant and kind mentor who welcomed students into her life and offered guidance on any and all subjects. Joan S. Berman, Professor Emerita, Barnard alumna class of 1948, is a pioneering mathematician. Her landmark discovery, known as the Berman Exact Sequence, is widely regarded as one of the most important contributions to the mathematical study of braids and surfaces. Professor Berman spent over 30 years teaching at Barnard, helping to pave the way for the next generation of women in mathematics. Ora Mendelssohn Rosen, class of 1956, was a research scientist who was part of the team that first cloned the gene for the human insulin receptor. She was also key to building the team at the Sloan Kettering Institute and was known to have an eye for identifying talented young scientists. Susan Scrimshaw, class of 1967, is a researcher, past president of Russell Sage College and a pioneering medical anthropologist whose mentor, fellow Barnard anthropologist Margaret Mead, class of 1923, helped her embark on a career of interdisciplinary research aimed at resolving health disparities around the globe. Women still have a long way to go to achieve gender parity in STEM, and it's so important for women to be at the table because when you get different people with different lived experiences and different ideas, they produce better knowledge. That's where discoveries happen. My name is Izzy Lapidus and I'm a sophomore at Barnard, majoring in Computing, Design, and Pedagogy. The fact that this year's gala is held at the Museum of Natural History is such a full circle moment for me. The summer before I started at Barnard, I interned at the museum through their Science Research Mentoring Program, where my team wrote code to analyze brown dwarf binary candidates, a type of celestial object. 
I'm also well acquainted with tonight's co-chair, Carly, because I'm a former scholar of Code with Clossy, her free coding camp for teen girls and non-binary students. Even though I attended a performing arts school, I've always had an interest in the sciences. Growing up, my mom was my absolute biggest cheerleader. Math and science didn't click for me right away, and those classes were difficult. But because my mom instilled in me the confidence that I could do anything I set my mind to, I didn't let those initial struggles hold me back. My mom passed away before I got to Barnard, and financial aid is what made it possible for me to continue pursuing my dreams. I strongly believe that financial status should never hold anyone back. And in fact, some of the smartest people I know also couldn't be at Barnard, nor have the chance to be inspired by their own amazing mentors without financial support. Yuval Denor, who is the STEAM in the City Program Coordinator, has been that mentor at Barnard for me. As a STEAM Fellow, I learned from Yuval how this Barnard program empowers local grade school teachers to build curricula that activate the city's parks and public spaces. I've always had many interests, and Yuval helped me find a way to combine them into a unique and entirely new major, one that speaks to everything I want to do with my future. As I continue my studies and forge ahead in my career, I want to be like my mom and like Yuval. I want to be the reason someone continues to pursue their educational interests, the person who always remembers to say, you got this. I've really thought a lot about how important it is to receive encouragement throughout the journey of learning, and I know I'm not alone in recognizing this. At Barnard, mentorship is critically important and thankfully quite easy to find. In the special video you're about to watch, you'll see how our honorees have built relationships with their own mentors and mentees and explore the impact of the beautiful lifelong connections they made. Joan Ruderman is a developmental biologist who focuses on public health, in particular, the effects of common chemicals that mimic or interfere with hormones. Mentors can give you tips and tricks for navigating all sorts of situations. You don't have to figure it out on your own. Everybody's been there before you, and learning from their stories of success, from their sort of success, or even their sort of failures is very helpful. You learn from hearing other people's stories. Ellen Gritz is one of the world's leading researchers in the field of cancer prevention. She has authored or edited over 300 publications, many of which address her research on smoking cessation and prevention. Ellen is masterful at translating science to practice to policy. She knows that part of the responsibility of being a senior scientist is paying it forward and nurturing the next generation of scientists. Carol Dweck has made revolutionary contributions to the field of psychology. Her work on mindset theory has illuminated the fundamental differences between having a fixed or growth mindset. When I came to interview at Columbia, 31 years ago, almost today. She was the first person that I met and she became my biggest supporter, my mentor, and the bigger sister that I never had. Professor Dusa McDuff is known for her research on the geometry of multidimensional structures and is also a member of the Royal Society, the world's oldest independent scientific academy. Well, I very much enjoy advising Barnard students and I do my best to help them encourage, uh, explore their interests. Professor McDuff is the reason why I'm majoring in mathematical sciences. She's an absolute amazing professor, an amazing person, and she was there to teach me everything that I need to know. I think one way to increase the number of women in STEM is to make it more approachable, to make sure they have the right background, and also expand their interests. Professor Karen Goldberg is my former research mentor at the University of Pennsylvania. Karen is best known, I think, in the organometallic chemistry community for her work in highly detailed mechanistic study. I admire Karen's ability to lead a group of scientists who are maybe coming at 
working together from their own interests and their own angles and kind of she's extremely able to bring everyone to the table and show them how they can move forward in collaboration as opposed to in competition. Jacqueline Barton is a world-renowned chemist who studies the chemical and physical properties of DNA. Jackie Barton is an incredibly famous and important inorganic chemist. There are so many things I admire about Jackie. Intellectual curiosity, her scientific creativity, her ability to lead, her ability to mentor so effectively. Jackie was the first female tenured member of the chemistry department at Columbia, and she had a lot of respect from the senior faculty. Helene Gale is the president and CEO of the Chicago Community Trust. As a young black woman, you don't always have a lot of role models, and I feel like she was my possibility model. She showed me that, you know, you could be anything you wanted to so long as you put your mind to it and put in the hard work. Brilliant physician, a brilliant philanthropist, a brilliant just person overall. She has been a grounding and supportive force in my life. It's been a very humbling experience to have her as a mentor and also really shown me the type of service that anyone in a position of power really owes to the generation coming behind them. Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a proud Barnard alumna, parent, and chair of the Board of Trustees. If you can believe it, this is my 17th Barnard Gala. Every year, I'm blown away by the generosity of both time and treasure that I see at this event. And this year, I'm especially thrilled about our exciting hybrid format because it brings us together in ways we've never been able to before. First of all, thank you to our unflappable co-chairs, Carly and Caroline who essentially planned three galas this year so that we could all experience the joys of this celebratory occasion. It takes commitment to deliver in-person, virtual, and regional watch party events all at the same time. Your efforts haven't gone unnoticed. Next, I'm beyond grateful to have this chance to acknowledge our 22 honorees this evening Thank you for the contributions you have made to bettering our world through the sciences, engineering, and medicine during the Barnard Year of Science and always. We are so proud of your achievements. Finally, and just as importantly, I want to recognize each and every single one of you for being here tonight. Your commitment to this community is truly what makes Barnard bold and brilliant. As I mentioned before, I've been participating in this annual gala for nearly two decades, and I can honestly say that I never ever tire of getting up in front of you all and telling you how much Barnard means to me. I've had the privilege of watching generations of women come through those beautiful gates, and every day I am reminded of the importance of upholding Barnard's mission to empower these incredible students with the strength, determination, and resources to bring their big ideas to life. This year, I am proud to remind you of the opportunity, nay, the responsibility, we have to equip our future leaders with everything they need to think critically, realize their potential, and make their voices heard. That includes the ability to discover and pursue their educational passions in both STEM and the arts without financial barriers holding them back. After all, a gift to Barnard makes an impact on many levels. It gives students the tools they need to explore their interests and become whomever they want to be. It gives the college the ability to sustain a singular learning environment that empowers rather than restricts and it gives us all something incredibly precious, hope for a better, brighter future. Our mission and ability to provide life-changing education to all deserving young leaders depends on your support. So tonight, I urge you to join me in helping Barnard build on this important promise. Thank you again for your already generous support.
The world is filled with talented, passionate young women, but not all of them have the financial means to pursue their dreams, nor the resources required to bring their big ideas to life. I, for one, didn't think that college was in the cards for me, but then I found Barnard. Since its founding, the college's mission has been to provide the highest quality liberal arts education to promising and high achieving young women. Barnard's need blind admissions policy means that people like me are admitted based on their personal and academic achievements. And it also means that we can comfortably choose a career path following our passions and what brings us joy, not just what it will pay. Financial aid allows me to make the most of everything that makes a Barnard education so special, from connecting with our distinguished professors, to savoring quiet moments on our beautiful urban campus, to securing internships and exploring all that New York City has to offer, to perhaps, most importantly, building lifelong friendships with my classmates. I've had the chance to meet people from all walks of life, take courses that challenge me, and think deeply about how I want to leave my mark on the world. I've been able to join clubs, volunteer, and explore what matters most to me, without having to worry about so much debt waiting for me after graduation. Thanks to the generosity of the Barnard community, I'm able to look ahead to a bright future filled with opportunity and nothing holding me back. For that, I'll be forever grateful. If you've been as inspired as we have to support the next generation of change makers, we hope you'll join us in making or increasing your gift to Barnard now. Scan the QR code on your screen or visit barnard.edu forward slash gala. What a fun and inspiring night this has been. I had a wonderful time celebrating Barnard's very own members of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, and I hope you all did too. Please remember that by participating in tonight's festivities, you are helping us provide a life-changing Barnard experience to those who will change our world. Thank you for showing your commitment to our community. You are just as important as the individuals we recognize throughout tonight's program, and we truly couldn't have done this without all of you. I'm sad to say that although the formal program has concluded for the evening, we hope you'll stick around to socialize in our virtual breakout rooms. Please direct your attention to your screens for instructions on how to enter the breakout room. And thank you again for your time and support. Please enjoy our final musical performance by Sarah Senior, class of 2024. Cheers! Cheers!